Headed to uh, New York City, headed to the Bronx and, and uh, Yankee Stadium. I think our guys are excited to play in the game. Um, again, against a talented Syracuse football team, as you guys all know, they got talent, they play hard, they're well coached by Dino Babers, and we've had a nice week of practice, and uh, we're inside this morning, and, um, and ready to go. Questions? The ACC sort of makes this a, a, a rivalry, says it's the Pitt-Syracuse rivalry. I think both sides sort of question that, but you guys have played a lot of close games against them. It seems like you've had a lot of one-score games, not all of them, but since you got here, have been a lot of one-score games. Do you feel like it's been kind of close? No, it's been, there's been a lot of close games. I think it's a tough game. Um, I think it's physical. Um, and I do see it as a rivalry. You know, the longer I'm here, I really do. You know, it's one of the, the old Big East games that was played. And um, and I, I do see it as a rivalry that, uh, that we get to embrace. Late again. <laughs> Uh, with, with the new ACC scheduling model coming out soon, the ACC made it a point that you guys are going to play Q's for the next seven years. I mean, do you view your views as, as this is a rivalry kind of coincide with the ACC's views of this is a rivalry as well? What are your thoughts on just that continuing for the next you know several years here? I think I'm good with that. You know, I love playing a team over and over again. I think that's part of what what makes a rivalry. Um, you know, you get to know who they are. Um, you know, it's it's, it's it's more fun to game plan. You're, you know, like we go back to 2016 you know, watching some of the plays they run. You know, one of the plays they ran when, you know, in that basketball game we played here, you know, they ran last week against BC. They ran it against Western Michigan. You're going, you know, it's the same stuff coming back out. Like, here it is. So you're practicing the heck out of that. And like, there's that, that chess match that you get when you play someone more than once um, or twice. And, you know, um, so, I, you know, I kind of like that, that chess match. How do you prepare for dynamics of a baseball stadium? Playing football in a baseball stadium. You know what? Um, you know, it really, really doesn't matter. It's a, you know, the field is the same length and all that. You know, some of the things we talked about this morning, you know, it's just the press box. You know, maybe being a little bit lower, and you can't see it in far away. So, you know, just being able to make sure we have binoculars up there. You know, just adjustments and you know what what did it look like up there? You know, to me, they got the best view up there. But if it's not a great view and you're, you know, you're way over in third base and, and it's a long way to get to the other hash just to see what's going on. It's just going to be different. It'll be a different angle as opposed to being like this, like when you're at home, you know, you're looking at, you know, it's a lot of sideways stuff and, and uh, I probably should go back and watch the videotape of that game. Just to you brought that up, just watching the videotape to see where that camera was and the angle they have up there. So those are concerns more than anything else. You know, we know, you know, we know right field is a little short there. If you catch a, you know, if Bub catches another fade in that end zone, he might end up, you know, uh, in the in the uh, in the stands there, uh, and just jump up when you get there. Does this matchup being outdoors, not being on Syracuse's campus, do you feel like this gives you guys a little bit of an advantage? Um, I don't think so. I think there's no advantage there. I don't think it matters where we play, indoors or outdoors. You know, we've had our success indoors. Matter of fact, we practiced indoors today in the dome. We, we practiced in the pit dome today, so it'd have been good either way. Uh, if we were playing in the dome, we'd probably turn the heat up, even though they got an air conditioned system now, like the old days. Uh, Dino would just turn the heat up and try to see if he could melt us. Um, you know, you guys have probably been there. It was like, it was, it was a fact. Um, I've had the conversation with Dino too, so I wouldn't say that out in public. Um, he tried to melt us, and uh, it w I don't think we melted too much. Pat, you Pat. talked about your uh, friendship with Dino. Did you just become friends when you start got the job at Pitt because you're both in the ACC, or how did that friendship come about? Yeah, just you know, since we've been in the ACC, you know. Um, at different meetings that we get to, you know, somehow, some way, you know, uh, even whether it's at the AFCA convention, we always find a way to, to sit down and, and have lunch or dinner or something together and and just, you know, and just talk. I mean, he's just, he's just you know, him and his wife, my wife's good friends with his wife as well. So um, it's just, you know, it's something that you know, we spent a lot of times together somehow, some way. You talk Maybe ball? it's a rivalry. Do you talk ball or you just talk kids or whatever? Uh, we talk everything. Mm -hmm. Talk everything. You know, it always, you know, comes around ball. Mm -hmm. He'll, he'll tell us we're, we're holding on defense and then never gets called and, and <laughs> we, have, we have fun. What kind, of an, what kind of an identity does the Dino Babers team take on? You know what, you know, I think a confidence, I think, you know, Dino's a really confident guy. So, you know, regardless of what the record is, he'll have those guys ready to go. He's confident, he's positive. Um, so I know that's what the team will come out. You know, they'll be ready to roll uh, like we will be. I just know he's just a... You know, and again, I've never coached with him. I just know how he is on the side. Just, he'll have his guys ready, um, and uh, you know, and they'll be they'll be positive. How are you? 
Will you use these last couple of games to get some different guys some looks? Is that something you, you would like to consciously do here over the last few? I'd like to get take these last couple of games to get some wins. I'm not worried about looks. We got spring ball and all that. I'm not worried about finding out who's got this or do I'm trying to win a football game. And that, that'll always be uh, why we step on the field on game days. How have you seen your defense improving over the last several weeks? Have you, what kind of improvements have you seen from them? You know, last week I saw improvement that, you know, it was kind of like, you know, put the blinders on and go out and play four quarters. And, you know, we play this game to play the game. And if you get to get out there on the field for, you know, we were watching cut-ups the other day. It was like cut-up number 100, you know, play number 104. You know, I think we had 109 plays back in whatever year that was in that basketball game that we played here at Aquashire Stadium, Old Heinz Field. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter if we have to play 104 plays or 109 plays. Go out there and play and worry about what you can control, control the controllables. Um, you know, they've, they've shown ability all the time to uh, – you know, to, to make plays and, and, uh, and do things the right way. So um, just I just want to see him play the right way, period. And, uh, and again, I think we've done a better job of stopping run at times, and then, and then you don't. So it's just, you know, um, I've seen improvements, but want to see more. By, sir, by putting the blinders on, do you mean you didn't worry too much about Florida State being the number four team in the country and they're not worried too much about what their own record is going into this game? You know, I think, you know, that's the blinders. I think it's a matter of just everything, just play defense, you know, and, again, it's – you know, I think we always go out with that mindset of, you know, it doesn't matter who we're playing, um, but, you know, just putting your blinders on and going, yes, you can say that. How ready do you feel your defense is to take on the quarterback mobility that Syracuse is going to give you guys the looks they try to set up on offense? Well, uh, I think it's pretty good, you know. Um, you know, I feel good with the athletes we have on the field to stop the, you know, the athletic quarterback. We've seen it up on this year, um, you know, whether it's, you know, drone and, you know, but the guy we played last week, you know, probably a Heisman Trophy candidate guy um, that I uh, thought was pretty good. Do you feel like your younger, like, linebackers, a lot of freshmen you guys are showing are adapting to that quickly enough for the ACC ball? We'll find out. You know, we just continue to get better. But, um, you know, we're happy with where some of those young guys are and it's consistency and it's how many plays can you give them mm -hmm. and, and then get them out, you know, but trying to give, you know, I think Bengali plays better when he's a little bit fresher. So we got to make sure we don't give some guys too many reps. You know, he was banged up a few weeks ago and still, you know, hampered. Um, so we need to, you know, we need to give him blows at times just so he can rest. Their offense lost Gadsden about a month ago. How have they adjusted to not having him on the field? Um, you know, I don't, I don't see a whole lot. Maybe they run it a little bit more, but I think it depends on who the quarterback is too. I mean, they ran it a little bit more last week against BC. I don't know if it was what they wanted to do against BC or it was because, um, you know, Gadsden, you know, for us it didn't change a whole bunch. I mean, I don't know if he had a catch last year against us. Um, I think I don't think he did. If he did, he had one. Um, but he's a great player. But they got other good players you know, that are that are capable. So I think they feel good with the skill that they've recruited there. Do you prepare like... for two quarterbacks this year, this this week? Huh? Yeah, of course. Well, how's how are they different? Two guys. You know, one's one's taller. You know, they both are athletic. I mean, Schrader can run, um, and uh, you know, he's a little bit taller. He's probably a more seasoned pass passer. He's got 34 career starts to. Del Rio's, you know, uh, Wilson's, um, you know, got just two, one against us and one last week. So I'd say experience is uh, is the main thing. It's um, we 34 to two. Makes your week tougher though. Happens to it does. It does. It is, you know, it makes it, you know, when you don't know what a guy looks like, uh, it always makes it harder. You don't know what they do, what you need to stop. But we we have at least video on both of them. It's not like going to Wake Forest and never seeing a guy before. It's um, not all that uncommon nowadays for a head coach to make coaching changes midseason. Um, you haven't done that over the past nine years, but do you think with the way things are now, things happen so fast at the end of the season, transfer portal, you have to move quickly. Do you see that shifting in the sport? And is that something you found yourself considering because things move so quickly at the end of the year? You know, um, you know number one, worried about Syracuse. Um, and not worried about the chaos on the outside that happens. Um, we're gonna, you know, just focus on our kids and, and what we do in this program, and, and nothing else. There's nothing's gonna speed up what we do and how we do uh, what we do here, at Pitt. We have time for maybe one or two more. Anyone else? How's it about Solomon, this week's game? Has Solomon gotten better and grown from the time you first met him to now? Oh, yeah, leaps and bounds. Uh, you know, Solomon Shields has really gotten better. Um, he's a guy that, uh, you know. A couple of years ago, I you know talked to my radio show the other day with Larry, um, just about where he was. There was times maybe for over the first year and a half, 
you know, coach, can I go play receiver? I think I'm a receiver. I'm not a linebacker. And then there was a finally the time he said, coach, I'm done with receiver. I'm going to be a linebacker. And that's when he finally put it in his mind that I'm going to be a linebacker is when you started to see him start to rise. He's had a good year and he's going to be better next year. Is it just light bulb after light bulb with him? I mean, just week after week, you feel like you see him taking steps forward? Yeah, and it's not just him. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are making steps that maybe you don't see. Um, but, you know, he's been here long enough that, you know, you can see you know, a little bit. But uh, uh, there's a lot of guys that the light bulb goes on, you know, whether it's, you know, Jules or, you know, sometimes it takes a little longer than you want or, or you have patience for. Um, but um, there's a lot of guys that are getting better week by week that you see. Um, and that's, you know, that's what experience does for you. Looking at your players, Last one, Dominic. Um, obviously, playing at UT Stadium is what must be interesting to them. I mean, do you think see them treating it as a special moment, or more just another game? Like <laughs> You know what, uh, I haven't really talked much about it, um, except this morning I threw up the stadium and the sidelines and, you know, just to give them a picture of where they're going. And um, I haven't really talked about, you know, the history of it. You know, they'll come out with uh, their pregame warm-up, you know, some pinstripes on, you know, they got the, the Yankee stripes on the, on their um, kind of their warm-up. You know, I think they got excited about that. Um, but um, it's a special place. It's different. You know, it's not a home game or an away game. It's a neutral site, and I think there's something to be had for that. And, again, like I said, I think the most impressive thing about, you know, where we're going is, you know, not the stadium uh, or the field, you know, the, the end zone that you can run into the wall. It's the people that are there, you know, in the relationships we've built through the years with uh, the Pinstripe Bowl and, and everybody that works for them. Having a game in New York City. You're not supposed to have another question. But. <laughs> well, I was going to ask about having an alumni that are in New York City being able to have an opportunity to, you know, pro close proximity, get to see a pit game. I mean, how exciting is that to know that there might be a whole new – crop of fans I haven't seen you guys play in a while. That's yeah, I think that's travel locally. Yeah, I think that's there's no question about it. We got a lot of population up there, you know, pit grads and uh, it certainly does uh, give an opportunity for some people that maybe can't travel all the way to Pittsburgh to see a ball game. No doubt about it. I think that's why we had such a good show in the last time we were there. What? Can I ask uh, one more? Please? It's up to EJ. EJ yeah. knows I got to get on with the Go TV ahead. crew here, so uh, he's getting a little tight. Uh, just real quick, uh, the uh, warm-ups you talked about with the pinstripes, are yeah. they white or blue? Or? They're white. Okay, with blue. Oh, pinstripes. yeah. Okay. Look, look like the Yankees, right? <laughs> so. Because you're working on behalf of the Pit Alumni Association, we're going to allow that last question. <laughs>